I thought you were. Hi everyone. Some people need to mute.
How many cats do you have, Chris? Yeah, just the one. He's just got a big, uh, big castle. Need more. And talk, talk to my housemates. Okay, let's, I think we should start. It's 8.05, so we should start. Hello, Ted. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing good. good. You wanna run the agenda today? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's go over the agenda, see what uh, items do we have there and start discussing uh, them. We have, quite a lot of time, uh, items. So, uh, first item is change processor and exporter interface to pass the source. I think I just responded to that. Um, who added it? Probably Rahul? Yeah, I added this, yeah. So while I was working on the resource, mm -hmm. um, I realized that resources are tied to the trace provider and the span processors do not have any idea which trace provider they are attached to. Okay. And we need to part the re, uh, pass the resources to the batch processor. Um, if we incorporate in the span data, it's probably not gonna be efficient. We want single resource pass to, for the batch of span. So I think if we pass as an argument, then the uh, batch processor can uh, either cache it or something. I have put some solution there. And, uh, it, and it can export to the exporter a uh, single common resource for the batch of span. I see. Uh, by the way, uh, talking about uh, batching and stuff, probably, probably we should, uh, we should uh, read more carefully what you have there. Okay. I do not understand exactly why it's not necessarily optimal, but I do see uh, that in my open OTLP implementation, I have to, to construct the map resource to spans. And uh, that may, may cause some troubles. Uh, so I do agree that there may be other better solutions. Um, anyone has to comment? Yeah, I think Bogdan, and I mean, we were just chat chatting this on your PR. Um, your, I think your your response to the question that I asked was, could we have multiple SDKs installed in a current system and the share the span processor between them? And hence we need to have different resources, but it still could be passed in to the export method then. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, one of the thing that, we have a, a limitation that there is only one resource per span uh, per per tracer pro, uh, provider, 
but there is no limitation that an, an uh, running binary cannot have two or three instances of the trace provider. So, yeah. Right. So, and there is not also a limitation that a, a spam processor cannot be attached to two. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, that's also I highlighted in the issue that uh, there is no limitation there either. So, I mean, one alternative is to associate the resource to the exporter, right? Um, and basically, that makes it easy as well. You cannot associate it with the exporter because exporter is associated to the processor. So, hence, you you can receive in the exporter from uh, from multiple resources. So, one thing that we can probably do is uh, is to change the exporter pipeline to to have a map of resource to span data instead of just span data and that will solve the problem and we do the the mapping in the pro, uh, in the processor that we implement yeah that's one of the thing yeah you can do that uh, create a mapping of the resource to the span data, basically group the span by the resources. Yes, uh, and also with the latest OTAP, I think is 83, mm -hmm. uh, I'm adding the concept of li uh, instrumentation library information, which may share the same concern as resource because essentially inside the resource, you have multiple instrumentation libraries mm -hmm. that are producing spans so you do uh, you do need to create the same mapping okay um given the beta timeline is like right around the corner uh what do we i mean uh do are we passing the resources along with the span in the interface for the span processor do we make that change so so currently as i said currently i'm passing it as part of the span data mm -hmm. and is not necessarily inefficient, at least in in some of the languages, because that's an immutable object. So I can share a pointer to yeah. that object. In Go, you can't have that, I think. Why? You you can have a pointer to the resource. But I mean, uh, it yeah, if we have that be immutable, it'll work. Isn't yeah. that how the span data was originally? There was a resource field, and it could be null, in which is the tracer was expected to fill it in. I think that was where we were like in May of last year. Yeah, so if it's immutable, I think it should be possible to to not to share the same memory. I mean to 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 have the same pointer there. Yeah. Let let me take it offline and look at it. Okay. That's an alternative. Uh I think I think it will be good to to do a better design on this, but just for the beta, we can live with that for the moment. Okay. For what it's worth, that's how we're handling this in JavaScript right now, is by having the the re a resource reference on the span datum. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna put here a comment. Okay, I added a comment that we will use a pointer reference to the resource in the span data and we'll reconsider this after beta, we'll redesign maybe. Uh, PRs. Who added this and uh, what is needed in this list of PRs? I added the first two. Okay. And for the, for at least the second one, I think you still haven't uh, reviewed it and you said you would last week. So that's why I put it there. Uh, for the first one, we discussed it in pretty good detail and I thought came to a conclusion uh, either last week or the week before, but it doesn't seem like there's been any 
comment or approval on it to uh, to say that. Uh, so it kind of got stuck. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna ping everyone. For the first PR, I left some comments, and I think that probably my my only small concern was about uh, removing the section about um, having uh, like a start active span as a separate operation. But we can discuss on the on the on the issue itself. Yeah, well, um, I think in the discussion in the SIG meeting like two weeks ago, people said that they wanted it to be two separate operations. Yeah, sure, but we need to add it as part of this PR or another PR, you know, um, because I mean, at this moment, it, it barely mentions, I mean, like the current before you changes, it says that um, it says that there are two operations, but it's not very clear. <laughs> and so if we, you know, so it's fine to keep them as two operations, but we need to make that super clear. Okay. Anyway, let's, let's discuss that definitely. Um, um, on the issue itself, yeah, I'm not going against the agreement. Okay. Just trying to be more clear. Yeah, no okay. problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, I'm I'm pinging everyone on these two issues, just to make sure we get their attentions. Library to right. go ahead. No, that's good. Thanks. Uh, the next one is clarify telemetry library. Okay, uh, who filed this? Who who put this into the agenda? In yeah, that's mine. I just wanted to make sure that we are all aligned and agree. And maybe I can get some more reviews as well. There were some concerns by Sergey. I see that he's in the meeting. Maybe he wants to comment on that one as well. Hello. Yeah, this is about library and uh, resource, right? Yeah. Yes. So my, my only concern was there. Yeah, I didn't block it. So my only concern was there is uh, how do we distinguish uh, instrumentation adapters and uh, uh, library instrumented itself so was it like yeah maybe i'm lost between instrumenting library and instrumentation library and uh what telemetry dot sdk will represent so, by yeah. the way, currently currently there is no way to to specify the instrumented library. So currently the name tracer allows you to only specify the instrumentation library, the one that instrumented is, makes the instrumentation. So it can be a plugin or something. Uh, I was thinking about this and I tried to kind of resolve this with a component thing, but it didn't get too much traction. Maybe one thing that we can do is add a property on the name tracer and aka on the instrumentation library uh, called instrumented library and then uh, and then uh, and then uh, we can have it from there sure i just want to make sure this pr is clear about what needs to be put in telemetry.sdk property like do we put instrumentation adapter name or we put library itself name so so library neither of these i think neither of these. of these in the in the in the resource i think what we put in the resource is the name of the op, like the library itself which is the open telemetry in in the resource what we will put is we'll put the the telemetry library not the the adapter not the instrument not the, the instrumentation not the instrumented library we'll put the the telemetry the producer of the telemetry which is most of the time is open telemetry and the the version and the language yeah that's exactly what the pr that i linked the 494 is about and i think sh we should be careful not to mix up things here so you have the OTEP 84 about adding the tracer name, AKA instrumentation library. Yes. Um, and 
we should look into that one separately. Um, I already approved it, by the way, because now it seems pretty fine and clear to me, at least. Then there is the telemetry library resource attribute, which I renamed from library, which was highly ambiguous, to mm -hmm. telemetry SDK. And um, I, to me, it is quite clear if if someone comes up with a with an even more precise um, description, I'd be open to edit. But I think that the, at least with the examples two two lines below, it is really clear because I say that the default open telemetry SDK, um, if that one is used, one should use open telemetry and so on. Yeah. And for the instrument TET library or application or service, I think we should open an issue and and continue this as a separate discussion so that things don't get mixed up. Yeah, so I think, I think currently we identified three libraries in this world. We, we have the telemetry library, aka the SDK that produces the, the telemetry. We have the instrumentation library. If, if we do auto instrumentation or if we do, for example, write a plugin for gRPC and that plugin belongs to open telemetry. And we have the third one, which is the instrumented library, which is something that we haven't uh, defined yet how to represent that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we also have Experter if we care about um, pointing that out. Can you repeat? Sorry, I couldn't get it. We also have Experter, ones that are uh, being used to send data. So yeah. you may want to specify this one as well. Yeah, we haven't, we don't have something for that as well. Maybe we should add. Although that's, oh. I mean, it, it's a different discussion, but I think the exporter is always specific to the data it exports and can add the, its own name on the data it produces, but that's a different discussion. Yep. Okay. I will read so the if, PR again from that perspective and uh, yeah, I will let you know. Thank yeah, you. Perfect. And there was one thing that Yuri um, opposed, uh, the fact that I don't uh, make it a compulsory attribute. Um, I actually think it should be required, but I didn't want to, to I don't know what the term is called, to um, sneak the change into a PR that is called clarify something. So I will do that in a in a follow up PR. Okay, just just respond that that you will address this in a follow up PR, and uh, that's good. Ah, I didn't quite catch that. You have some noise in the background. I said I said just make sure you 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 comment on the PR that you'll follow up with the with the next one to to fix that part. Ah, yeah, I did. I did. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Next one. Messaging attributes. Yeah, that's also me. Um, it has been open for like a bit more than one and a half months now, and it would be great if people could look into it. By the way, it has three reviews, so it should be good to go. Um, I think that the, the latest, uh, from what I remember last week, uh, Lyudmila had some uh, questions about it, but you know, she's not, um, she's on holidays or something. Um, so yeah, I, I suggest we just merge it. Uh, three, three approvals and one uh, suggestion uh, just uh, mark a lot of these conversations as resolved. So, um, because just, just not be rude to people, by the way, uh, because we know Ludmila is on vacation for the moment. Maybe, maybe file an issue uh, to follow up on that when she's back. Mm -hmm. Sounds reasonable. It will, be um, only, so it will be a while. And I think one of the suggestions I have for semantical convention PRs, or like in documentation in general, if you start tracking um, all the implementations of the semantic convention, it will make life of everybody easier because we will know like the semantic convention already implemented and this is how like it's uh, it used in practice. And um, I think some concerns people have is, it's, it looks great on paper, do we actually, can, can we actually implement it? That's kind of, uh, so maybe, if we start tracking implementations of this semantic convention, it will make life easier. 
Yeah, I think what also Ted proposed last time is that we need some basis to start implementing stuff and then we we will find uh, possible problems in, in those and then are able to revisit it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And if this list is empty, then it, uh, it will give a sign that like something yet to be changed if we will find some problems in real life. But what do you mean by uh, track implementations of it? So maybe on the top of the document, there will be the saying, like we have implementation of this semantic convention for like, I don't know, Azure Event Hub and uh, references implementation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's just a suggestion. It's not, nothing actionable at the moment, I think. Okay. So yeah, anyway, uh, uh, as whenever you are, uh, when, whenever you have filled those issues, uh, you know, around your Mila's uh, questions, let's definitely merge it. Yeah, I mean, I responded to all of them. I'm just, I don't have any uh, verification from her yet that that this is well, fine and addressed now. Um, well, I, I suggest writing a meta issue or something just to, you know, hey, like we, after merging this PR, there are, few remaining questions feel free to uh, either close this issue or, or keep the discussion going here you know so some meta mm -hmm. issue so we don't forget all right okay uh, there is then uh, next one is otlp result code Probably Tim added it or I something. added that and thanks for digging it up actually. It's been there for a couple of months, I, I believe already. We need a decision on this. We uh, we can't move forward with the protocol implementation until we decide on this. Basically, uh, the question is whether we're using gRPC result codes as uh, the indication of whether the request should be retried or no, or we use uh, as it was previously in the uh, pro protocol, we use explicit uh, flag to indicate the retriable or non-retriable non errors. So we have we have to use if if we are using gRPC as the the protocol, the transport protocol, uh, we have to use their codes because that's what they are going to return to us. For example, in case of in case of a deadline exceeded. There is no other signal that we receive. We're just going to receive a, a status called deadline uh, exceeded, and we exactly. have that. exactly. This exactly. is, by the way, need to clarify. We're not going to use gRPC codes in our pipeline. We we in our pipeline we have the three values that you propose. Is uh, this this PR is mostly like if you are using gRPC between the, uh, as a transport between the client and the server. Here is how you tr uh, transform the gRPC codes into what we call retriable and uh, not retriable errors. Yeah, basically, uh, you, how do you handle the error, right? gRPC code returns an error. What does that mean? What do yeah. you do? Yeah, but this is, applies only to OTLP. That's something that people need to understand. We do not right. force everyone to use gRPC codes or anything like that. We just say on OTLP, where we do use gRPC, this is how we're going to treat this yeah. error. It's not yeah, that's, that's very explicitly called in the in the PR. It's only about OTLP and only about gRPC. Yeah, I, I felt from a, from a, a Christian comment that it was not that clear. But anyway, um, I think I think as I said, this is how I I think is possible because otherwise uh, there are a lot of these errors come from the framework. Uh, for example, the auth thing, if you, if you use gRPC and you set up auth or whatever auth mechanism you have, you'll get a permission deny or unauthenticated error without, you having, uh, without your code running. So you don't, have to, you don't have a way to send back any information. Right. Yes, that's right. So please go have a look at the PR. We need the quick resolution on this. Uh, otherwise, I mean, we're probably already late unless we're, I don't know what's the plans with the beta release. Are we still doing the March 16th thing or it may get delayed? 
March 16, uh, based on our discussion, March 16 is a target to have a candidate release for beta. The final beta is uh, 20 something. Okay, so I think that we are not going to be able to do the OTLP by March 16th based on this and other things that are still in progress. Uh, let's let's aim for that. Let's aim for that, and we will decide uh, if. if right. Yeah, the implementation is in progress, but we only have six days remaining. I doubt we'll have a release candidate by then, but let's try. We'll see. Also, also, yeah. yeah. Let's let's give it a shot, and okay. we have to slip. Damn it! But like. Let's let's try and put a crunch on for this last week. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the reason why I digged into this is I was implementing the OTLP in Java for 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 uh, as a client as an exporter, and I I was like, oh, I remember I saw something when to retry and when to not retry, and this is how I found it. So you don't have much choice when you write the code, you get the error code at some point, and you have to do something with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Handling code, it depends on that. So what okay. do you do now? That's probably why we haven't find this very useful because nobody was writing this exporter. Right, right. Now, now that everyone for beta have to write this, is the time when we find this kind of issue. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, thanks for, for filing that. Uh, anyway, let's continue the discussion there. Please, uh, guy, uh, everyone, uh, please focus and read this and uh, provide comments. This will be very useful. Thank you. <coughs> Next one. Um, metrics view API. Do you mind, Chris, if I ask you to postpone that discussion until next week? Yeah, this has been explicitly excluded from the beta milestone. Yeah. Let's not discuss it. Um, I, I will add a couple of more. Let me, let me do this. Um, Oh, uh, I need to be able to do it. Okay, there, there are some new issues we should discuss. I don't know if, if that deserves to be listed, like the, the ones about character sets and coding is 504, 501. So by the way, I'm adding new, uh, the label set uh, uh, OTEP. Uh, please, please review. Okay, I think, all right. The label set OTEP has quite a lot of support. I need one more approver on that. Um, uh, so please, somebody do that. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we already have like uh, for the label set. We already have like five or six approvals, including external people. Right. We just don't only have three of the official ones. Um, yeah. By the way, I want to add a couple. Um, there's also one on metrics, and, uh, which is more of a philosophical like statement, which I updated last night, but it's not quite ready. So I'm not going to plug it right now. That's number eighty-eight. And I think that most people have agreed to it. It's just not clear. So I'll keep working on it. Okay, perfect. Uh, so yes, uh, we need a bit more reviewers on the, uh, the removing label set. The adding instrumentation library also has a bunch of support, three official approvals, uh, an extra one. So I would like to, to have that uh, also under your model, please. Okay, next. Uh, Next uh, topic, I think we discussed about PRs, it's mostly about people uh, reviewing them. Uh, who added this and please translate. Uh, I added that. I still need some feedback on that. So John, oh. if you managed to take some guys to the, <clears throat> that you said from expert from function as a service to review that PR. And second is, you are a comment of you, Bogdan. Yes. If the execution ID does belong to the correlation context or not, should we track that, track that as resource attribute or should we add to the correlation context? Um, yes, so in general, uh, in general, uh, my idea was, uh, I think I think your proposal was that execution ID changes between uh, different executions, correct? Exactly. And uh, and uh, one of the property that we tried to have was that resource describes an instance in a way that is not. So that's that's 
for me, that's a runtime property of a property of the request. Every request has a different execution ID, right? Mm -hmm. so, so applying that logic for me, that's a property of the request. So it's probably belonging to the correlation uh, context. And then hence will be associated with all the spans that are produced during that execution. And uh, we can associate as exemplars, for example, for, for histograms, latencies that we produce. Okay, I see your point. Thank you. Um, Funny, the, the, new Relic, the New Relic folks chimed in and all of their comments uh, have already been, I think, responded to and uh, they thought it looked great. Okay, okay thank you. So, and that's, that's why, by the way, that's why with the correlation context, that's why I'm, I, I was pointing to that because you also propose to add that as a span attribute. And I think, <clears throat> I think uh, it's, it, we should add it to the correlation context and then it will get automatically added to all the spans. Okay, I see your point. <clears throat> Instead of manually added it for every span that we create. Okay, I will look at it and then I will comment on the PR. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Number, okay, whoa. I just grabbed the latest uh, stats from the milestone on what's logged in for the spec version 0 0.4. Um, just putting what's there for right now. So uh, I see a lot of the language SIGs trying to follow the lead of the spec SIG and with the current status of, uh, with the current direction of 0 0.4 milestone are optional things in order to include into the beta launch. Um, I think they're looking for things to solidify for possible inclusion into the beta launch based on the timelines of uh, March 16th as the code complete date. So I think something maybe needs to be cleaned up or adjusted in order to make, make it reasonable either to achieve this or to push out for another milestone. Um, yes, I, I do agree with you. I, I think there is a meeting about beta later today or something. Uh, I think we should address all these issues and we should go yeah. over all of them and decide which one goes and which one does not go into the uh, beta. Mm. Yeah, we're meeting at 2.30. Andrew, you have an invite, so do you, Baga. Okay. okay. Yeah, I also heard a date of like March twentieth uh, being thrown out. So we can talk about that at the at the two thirty yeah. meeting about the timelines and such. But uh, yeah, we're still. I mean, at least in my head, we're still aiming for the original date of the the what's the sixteenth as code complete. Um, the other date was thrown around was like the actual announcement, but that's more like March thirtieth. But that okay. that's not like an engineering date. That's just like blog posts and things. Okay. So uh, I don't know whether this meeting uh, could be at least adjusting the due date of the version 0 0.4 milestone because having it as the due date of February 28th just doesn't make sense to. Oh, February 28th. Yeah, no, that agrees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let, yeah. Me, let me adjust that. Yeah, Bog Bogdan can go adjust that right now. I did. I put it March 16th for the moment. As every... <laughs> yeah, okay. March 16th. It's, that's, that, that's good for now. It's better than Excellent. in the past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, just to, to jump in line, I was asking about beta blockers, but I think one thing I want to emphasize is for me getting the, the beta started, we have an ideal, of course, we don't want to make breaking changes after we start the beta, but the main point of starting the beta is to make sure we have something that works end to end that people can start using and start getting like feedback from building instrumentation and, and checking out uh, the results in a backend system. Um, so if we do have some design changes, we have to push out past March 16th or people are trying to make trade-offs to figure out what they should work on to get the beta at the door. 
it's really about getting that basic end-to-end -end pipeline uh, out the door. So you've got an API for some API for metrics. Uh, the trace API is like, I think, very locked down at this point. Uh, an SDK for those things, exporters, a way to talk to the collector, and then collector exporters to talk to the back end. So those, those are really the core things so that we can start doing user research and, and getting our feet wet with with uh, getting people onboarded onto the project. Yes, so I think I think you're correct, and I think we are we are doing great progress. Since we set this deadline, we're doing much better progress than before. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Even though, even though, want to move the deadline. It's, it's even though we may not move the deadlines, but I think we have great progress. Yeah, I, I see a lot of like real hard work going on with everyone, and it's normal. It's Deadlines get closer, it gets more stress, but I think people are real, honestly like doing some really awesome work, but we, we, we have to be realistic yep. about like yeah. what is remaining for the timeline, because as it gets closer, there is um, less and less yeah. that can be done. So we have to understand what is the definition of done and uh, what is a realistic timeline for everyone. Yeah. So, so Andrew, so for the moment, let's ask a bit with tougher deadlines. We found in the past that if we don't have these deadlines, we we are reluctant on uh, on uh, making decisions sometimes. So let's have some deadlines, and maybe maybe as Ted said, we we should revisit a bunch of these, and we should not be worried to break some of the things during the beta phase. Yeah, uh, we are declaring in beta. We still can break some of the things if we find critical mistakes in our design choices. Yeah. It's quite clear to me we've we've passed the good enough mark with our designs. I have some question around the the remaining metrics work because I think that's an API that's more new, and so I know we definitely have more ideas about what a better metrics API would be. But it seems like on that front, we're, we've also hit the the good enough mark for launching. So I actually wouldn't mind an update about uh, the current state of the metrics discussion because I know that's an ongoing. Yeah, uh, I think I think the last last item that I want to push is the removing of the label set that will uh, introduce some uh, a bigger change in the API. Uh, anything else, uh, uh, especially Josh work was is very good and it's, it's, it's a great. So we're in a situation right now where we've agreed upon and negotiated and discussed a number of changes that haven't landed in the spec language yet. So we're kind of in a backup, like I uh, can't merge things quite fast enough. Um, so I agree that label set is the last significant change from a sort of what's going to break if the user starts using this, but we are, we already have plans to introduce to, um, to introduce some new instrument types uh, and like those can be done after the beta, for example. Yeah, they, they will not. Uh, and, and by the way, the Go SDK is completely out of sync with the current like state of the specification and I'm working on that as fast as I can, but it's not gonna be ready. Like it's not gonna match the spec on March 16th, right? Unless we all start working 24 seven and getting me really fast code reviews, Good. which I don't expect. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, define restrictions for attributes and label keys. Armin, you probably Yes, are. I brought that up. Um, I just noticed that we don't have any restrictions there, like at all, um, defined in the spec. There are some uh, implementations that impose um, restrictions on their own, for example, the Java SDK. Um, limits attribute key length to 255 characters and so on. But I think we should really um, find a common restriction definition in the spec so that people can rest assured that what they are doing conforms with the spec because the limits that Java imposes, for example, are not documented at all and, and not really um, expected to be stable. So yes, this is something the spec is definitely missing out on. Yeah, uh, a bunch of the restrictions in Java come from the, the, the previous, uh, my previous work with Open Census, and where I believe that that, that those are the good ones. 
uh, sorry for that, but I, I do think, I think I discussed with Josh as well about the character set the, uh, question that we need, we need to have an encoding for all these strings. If we say something is string, we need to define an encoding for all these strings because otherwise, uh, by default, for example, a lot of people will assume UTF-8, but that may not be the case. Uh, if we do truncation or stuff, we may break the, the, the uh, encoding. Uh, so, so we need to, to, to specify for all the strings that we support in our library, not only for, for every string, even the spam name has to have an encoding defined. For string. Yeah, I want to add, uh, Armin, thank you for, for posting that issue or that PR. I was actually um, about to write the same type of issue because we talked about it last Thursday in the metric SIG. I fully support that issue and the restrictions that you proposed. Thanks. As I said, we need to, to only have a general thing for all the strings, and then if there are others, other parts that we are more constrained, we comment on that. But we, I think we need for all the strings in our system an, a, a definition. Uh, last week I commented to my colleagues that we were talking about encoding issues and Unicode and stuff, and that meant we were at the end. So that's the nice thing here. Um, I, I know from working in logging systems that, that people are gonna dump every encoding in the sun, under the sun into a log. So eventually this solution won't hold up, I think, but um, I'm happy with it for now. I think we can always relax. So, so if we start with uh, more restrictive things, we can always relax that restriction because it's backwards compatible. Yeah, or you could extend it. You could have like a way to indicate the encoding somehow, which sounds terrible, but. Okay, uh, I think this is uh, important to be discussed. I, I do agree that can happen after beta. I don't think it's a blocker in a way that we can have an end-to-end -end working and we can clarify this immediately after the beta. Uh, any beta blockers? Uh, that was me. I think we already discussed this, but uh, I'm just curious if anyone on the call does have anything they're they're hyper concerned about? Uh, we've discussed metrics already. Is there any other concerns? Yeah, the OTLP, as I mentioned, but uh, we'll see. We can make it happen. Great. Tigran, is there anything that we in, on the group here can do to help you and you know speed that process up, or is that just a man hour sort of thing? Uh, I think we already have a few people working on this, um, mostly full time. I don't think it's there is a way to actually split it into more ways for others to help. I I don't think that we need help for other issues, but for this particular thing, I don't think having more people will help help actually to deliver it faster. The the OTL particularly. I think Tristan, uh, things that will help us probably is clarify that uh, OTAP with the retriable things. Yes. That, that, that's probably something that as, as a community we can help Tigran. Uh, besides that, I think he has a lot of support from, uh, from his colleagues and I also help him. So he, 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 we, we can probably have something working there. And speaking of help, even though uh, KubeCon Europe has been punted and that was where we originally wanted to do a kickoff with like open telemetry workshops, uh, we are planning, we don't have exact plans yet over at LightStep, but we are planning on trying to continue to organize open telemetry workshops and training sessions to uh, just both get an understanding of like how, what needs to get worked on in open telemetry, how easy is it to get started with, but we're also hoping, you know, that will naturally get more interest in the project and uh, will uh, cause uh, more organic growth and like people wanting to contribute back to the project. By the way, uh, I, it would be nice uh, for people uh, if we can organize maybe a meetup uh, here in San Francisco. We are a bunch of people in San Francisco and yeah. the reason I'm proposing here is because 
because we are a lot of people, but everyone can do that in, in their areas. Mm -hmm. I think we, we can have a meetup with people, uh, more contributors and, and users, more informal than a workshop or anything. It's just like chats and, and stuff. That would be great. I guess yeah. talking in person meetups and all sorts of things. So without travel restrictions, it's, it's unclear, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. masks, <laughs> arms length, you know, like less than a thousand people. <laughs> yeah. One meter apart. Yeah, and sharing the coronavirus. So it's a meetup where we share knowledge about telemetry and coronavirus. So we share. <laughs> We're sharing knowledge of coronavirus or just sharing coronavirus? <laughs> um, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe a bit of both. <laughs> With this global pandemic, really what everyone should be doing is staying locked in their basements and hacking on open telemetry. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The problem, the problem is if you lock, uh, lock into a bunk, bunker, you, you're not going to have internet. So, I don't know. You just haven't seen internet. everyone else's bunkers yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come up to the Pacific Northwest. I'll show you. Yeah, that's right. And you need a better bunker. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we are uh, done with the agenda. Any, yeah. any item, uh, anything else we should discuss? Or we can get 10 minutes back and go hacking more. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much. Ciao. Right, see you later. See you. Bye.